Hey guys, we're going to finish up with the the little Edelbrock 2111 performer for a 4.3 liter Chevy. I can see now that it's cleaned up, there's a couple spots on the floor I need to touch up. But overall, it's uh, pretty much done. I've done my testing. You can see in a couple spots where you hit the burr with one direction and then you turn around and you hit it from the other direction. And it looks a little funny. Uh, the balancing went pretty well. Uh, let's see what we got. Well, it doesn't really matter right now. We'll go over that in a minute. As far as improvement, I forgot to mention on the first video of this that we had some runners in like the 240, high 240s. That's more than most Victor Juniors do, completely stock, which I didn't think of it at the time, and then it hit me. I'm like, wow, that little manifold really flows well, and probably the reason is those runners are really short. They are all different lengths, okay? The end ones have pretty serious curves. You can see the way they come in on, on the side, right? And this one is even steeper curve. So in reality, you have three different length runners on this side and basically the same layout on, on the other side. So each one of them is going to have a different por torque peak RPM wise, and they're going to flow a little bit differently. Okay, so what we wound up doing is we didn't do nearly as much work on the high-flowing runners as we did the low-flowing runners. Uh, that way it's fairly even, way more even than it was stock. And some of the other things we need to talk about is the, the burr texture is going to help keep the fuel in suspension, so it's going to run better in a carbed application. He's actually got a square bore Edelbrock that'll bolt right to this, and that'll work out really well. Okay, the runner dividers, you can see that left port's got some work to do on the floor. I missed, I missed some spots. But that divider is needed quite a bit of work. I mean, if you compare this to the, the first video, that divider is quite a bit different than it was in order to try to even out the flows between those two ports. Let's take a look at the other side and see how similar it is. Okay, I had to do similar work on this side because the ports are very similar in shape and layout. Because the ports are so heavily curved, they're actually quite hard to get all of them with the burr. Uh, not the easiest manifold to port because it's, it's so tight. Everything about it is tight. But it worked out really nice. I did do quite a bit of changing inside the plenum. Um, they had a lot of lumps and bumps and lines that aren't really going to be a benefit. So the plenum got quite a bit of work. I didn't change the height of the, the divider at all. I just burred it and it has a radius. It had a radius stock. And uh, I think it's going to work out really well. Let's take a quick look at the uh, flows and see how we did. Okay, my typical messy uh, paper. The stock, the stock average was 243.01. Okay, after my first cut, the average went to 253.48, which was an additional 10.47. Then I did a third cut, which was mostly radius on the top of the port and dividers to try to even them up a little better. We went up a little bit more from 253 to 254 and change. Not a huge gain, but it's it was more of a balancing act than, uh, than trying to get extra CFM. How did we do on six? We went to 247 to 257. That's uh, plus 9.5 CFM. 231.8 to 254, up 22.2, 242.6 to 253, up 10.7. As far as this side, 257, 254, 253, nice. Over here, 236, up to 260, 
23.4, our biggest gain. Here, this was our highest flowing runner to begin with, 249.9, and we only gained 0.2. Why? Well, it doesn't need as much work as the other ones because it was already better. Now, the last one, 249.9, and we wind up 253.7, up 4.3. So, overall, I think we're quite balanced for what it is. And uh, in the comments of the last video, someone was talking about the firing order on the 4-3 and that dual plane really doesn't do anything. That's a good comment, and I do not know the answer to that because I never researched it on a 4-3. So... It's something that's something cool for you guys to look into, and maybe that's one of the reasons this is a single plane. Okay, you're not going to get the benefit of a dual plane. I do know they actually. I'm pretty sure they made a dual plane at some point for these. I don't. I don't know whether it was a bow tie intake. I don't know, but I seem to remember there was a, a, like a quadrajet. There was a cast iron quadrajet for the 4.3. I'd be interested to know whether that's a single plane or a dual plane. All right, guys, I'm just going to give this a final cleanup on a couple spots that I missed and then wash it, and off it goes. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.